Thank you, Ismail. That was very, uh, that was very nice. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to come to Spain. It's one of my favorite countries in the world. So it's, uh, it's a real privilege to be able to come. So, so please feel free to ask questions of clarification or, or otherwise I'm happy to, uh, to answer questions during the talk. So the first paper is a joint paper with Eric Hanischek, who's at Stanford University, and Greg Branch, who's a graduate student at the University of Texas at Dallas. And let me get right into it. So this, this paper has followed a long series of papers we've done with these administrative data uh, in the state of Texas. And this paper is, we, we like to think of it as almost more general than just thinking about schools. And there's been a lot of research trying to, and a growing body of research, trying to figure out the importance of leaders, be they the, you know, the CEO of a corporation, uh, the manager of a football team, um, the principal of a school. There, there's sort of a widespread belief that the leader is very important, but empirically it's been very difficult uh, to demonstrate, and I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. So the, the first question that we focus on is, does the quality of leadership explain a substantial share of the variation in the outcomes of an organization, be it a corporation, a school, or, or otherwise? And then specific to principles, so, so the, princ the principal is the leader of the building in the United States. The way the school districts tend to be set up is that there's a superintendent who's in charge of the district, and the district is usually made up of a number of schools. And the principal is, works for the superintendent and, and is in charge of the particular building or campus. So the second question is, does the variation in principal effectiveness differ by the share of low-income students in a school. So in the U.S., there's great concern uh, about the low achievement in many high-poverty schools. And one of, the, one of the main concerns is that these schools have, have a great deal of trouble attracting and keeping both teachers and administrators. And so one of the questions that, that we're really interested in is, does the quality of the leader of the school potentially matter more in these high poverty schools? They tend to have more difficulties with, um, with student behavior because those kids aren't supported so much. Oftentimes they come from families with only a mother at home. And they also tend to have much more difficulty um, attracting and, and keeping teachers. So we, you know, we have an idea that actually the, the leader is potentially more important in a high poverty school than in a middle class school. Um, that has greater stability. Um, and then we try to think about some of the, the ways in which leaders will influence how well the, the, the quality of the school is. And one of them um, is through selecting teachers in order to make, this, ma make the quality of instruction higher. So, so the question of is the pattern of teacher turnover consistent with the idea that raising the quality of teachers is an important mechanism through which principals influence school quality. And then finally, we, get, we try to get at this policy question of are effective principals more likely to leave high poverty schools? And in the U.S., it depends upon the, the district has different rules about, about principal uh, jobs. In many districts, the superintendent can move principals around from one school to another. Some principals may have more seniority and more uh, control over where they're working. Um, but in small districts, um, principals tend not to be protected by job security or tenure, though they may have contracts. Um, and therefore, if a the school is not doing a good job or the superintendent simply doesn't like the principal, oftentimes they can um, fire the principal and then hire someone else. So I'd like to spend a little time talking about these methodological challenges, both because of, of the analysis, but I think for policy, they're very relevant. So my, the, the research that we build um, on in this study was research we did about teachers. And so when, when we say here it's difficult to separate the contributions of leaders from other factors, this first point that observed characteristics explain little of the variation in student performance is a point that was made about teachers. So in the U.S., 
Um, there was a famous study in the 1960s called the Coleman Report, which was looking at what explains the differences in, in student performance across the country. It was really the first big collection of statistical data. And what they found was that the characteristics of schools, the spending per student, teacher experience, <coughs> teacher education, exp even class size, explained very little of the differences in student performance. And that was the start of a huge literature on, on education production functions, trying to, trying to estimate the causal effects of various things. And what, what came of this was it was very difficult to find teacher characteristics that explain much of how well kids did. And this was a real puzzle since most people thought that teachers were really important and they differed a lot in how effective they were. So it was a real puzzle that you couldn't find descriptors or characteristics of teachers that explained a lot of those differences. And in the work that we did on, uh, with these same Texas data and the work that other people have done and are continuing to do, um, I think kind of resolved that puzzle. And that is that teachers are in fact very important and they differ a lot in how effective they are in, in their teaching of kids. But those differences aren't really captured very much by whether the teacher has a master's degree, the teacher's experience teaching after the first year or two where there does seem to be a lot of improvement, even how high teachers score in a licensing exam. Rather, you can take, say, two women teachers, 40 years old, um, both went to the same university for training, and if you randomly pick two people who look identical on these characteristics, on average, they'll be very different in terms of how effective they are as teachers. And so I think in the U.S., this has been an important development because it's changed the way people think about, about education policies. So before, the idea that if you wanted to raise the quality of teaching, you just pass regulations that, you, that teachers would have to have more education, certain type of education, you, you would pay more for experience, and that's no longer the thought. Now I think it's much more in the U.S., much more common now, to relax the rules about who can teach, so you don't have to, in many places, have this strict teacher training background, and focus much more attention on the measurement of how effective teachers are. Okay? Because it's, a, it's an understanding that you can't really say who's going to be a good teacher just by the characteristics that they have. And one of the implications of this is that one of the implications of this is that the school leader or the school principal has become a much more important person in terms of trying to get a high quality of instruction in the classroom. Because now that school leader is expected to evaluate teachers and make good decisions about providing teachers with feedback and information about how to improve their teaching and make decisions about who to keep um, and who to, to not offer a new contract to. And in the U.S., typically, after three or four years, teachers get tenure, which is pretty strong job security. So I think this paper, we're, we're trying to think about that it's very important from a, we think from a policy point of view, the principle should be very important and that we should find lots of variation among schools and the effectiveness of the principal, the school leader, and from a, for public policy it's important to, to document that. And then to start to learn why it is that the school leader you know, is more effective in one school than the school leader in a different school. We don't expect to be able to identify characteristics about the school leader that's going to predict very well how, how good of a you know, how good of a principal they're going to be. Because again, you know, you take two people who look alike, one is likely to be a much better leader than another because really being, you know, being a school leader is someone who can have serious conversations with their staff, really set, set a good environment, high expectations for the students and for the teachers, and it's a complicated job managing, uh, managing a school. So the, the other thing that's important and difficult, which is particular to um, school leaders is that in almost all data, you don't observe what the school leader is doing. 
So there's literature that, that looks at people go into schools and they describe what the principal is doing, and that's very informative. But in those studies, they don't link it to outcomes in a way that you can really have confidence that a particular behavior is, is associated or the cause of higher outcomes. Um, and so this is a problem. And the final one, when we talk about semi-parametric analysis, that's just looking at the outcomes of, of the kids, measuring the learning, and then trying to attribute some component of that to, this, to the principal. And what's difficult about this for principals is you're really trying to say, was the school good during the period that that person was the leader of the school? And that's hard because there's lots of other things in the school that are going on that that person had nothing to do with. And so to be able to draw the inference that it's up to that person and that we're really capturing the effects of that particular leader is a very difficult problem. And if you compare it with trying to say, well, is the teacher good or not? You could think in the teacher, you could have two fourth grade classrooms and you have um, one teacher in one and one teacher in the other. They're both in the same school. As long as the distribution of the kids is relatively the same, you can really compare the performance of the kids in those two rooms to get a sense of um, the importance of the quality of the teacher in terms of determining uh, how well the kids do. Whereas with the school, you're trying to say something about, well, how well did the school as a whole do this year relative to last year or relative to the school down the street? And so I think it's a much more uh, difficult case to make that you're actually capturing the effects of the school. So I'll quickly say that there's a growing literature on principles. It used to be that the focus was on these characteristics, and of course they didn't find very much. Um, and now there's more work looking at this the, the way in which we are, where we're trying to look at the outcomes of the, the kids and trying to draw inferences and say something about the principles on the basis of the pattern of the outcomes of the students. And as I said, for, for, from our own perspective, we're building on this uh, research we did on teachers in a similar way. And this is going to be the main part that, that I think is the most compelling case we have for estimating how, how different principles are and the effects they have on schools. And essentially what we're looking at is we're looking at differences over time and how well kids in a school are doing and see if you get really large differences um, across the years in which the school changes principle. And I'll, uh, I'll get to that more below. <laughs>